name is Star Sullivan. I'm the uh, Wastewater Division Superintendent for the City of Missoula. And we're going to be talking about a project we just completed uh, uh, called the Headworks to the plant. Uh, that's where everything initially comes into the treatment plant and that's where we start the treatment. Uh, you know, we always have to evaluate the treatment facility and, you know, to find out what's, you know, worn out, what needs to be replaced, what needs to be upgraded, what, what capacity needs we have. So the original Headworks was put in in the 1980s and typically Headworks are meant to last about 20 years. So we're, we're you know, well beyond the life cycle of that, that structure, that process. So, you know, this project actually started a few years ago. We identified that. So not only do you identify your needs, then you have to come up with the money. So with the economy and everything, we had to postpone this project a couple of times uh, to do that. And I have to thank Brent Ramharder, the city finance officer, and Bruce Bender, who actually were able to put the financing together for this project. So we were able to proceed with that. So uh, it, began in, uh, it began in October of 2010. We need a state of the art. You know, we've had order complaints from the treatment plant, uh, and, and we had to be responsive to that. So we dealt with that um, with this project, and we did an order characterization study a couple of years ago. And the two areas that were identified as the worst problems was the headworks, the, the old headworks, and a solids holding tank that we had. So we had looked at different uh, order control methods to do that, but we were approached by a company who had a new technology out of Germany um, and we did a pilot at the treatment plant. We did it for an entire year so we put one of their units uh, on this uh, solids handling, uh, the solid storage structure. It was very effective because we're a little reluctant to buy, get into new technologies. We don't like to be the guinea pig to put something in and then have it fail and spend a lot of money on it. But we were convinced that this was a, a, a good product. It doesn't use any water like typical odor control systems do. No freezing in the winter. It had a relatively small footprint, which you know we're, we've been growing at the treatment plant, so we wanted to keep it small. Uh, so the, you know that was a goal of that. And we also needed to upgrade our headworks. We needed to increase the capacity. Uh, uh, our old headworks was corroded. It was smelly. It was all those kinds of things. So we had to do something. So. Uh, this, this, we did this project. It's all state of the art. Uh, we kept uh, energy conservation in the in the front of our minds to do this. So we went ahead. At all the lighting in these buildings is LED. Um, we uh, our old headworks was not hooked up to our methane boiler system. I can say like uh, we do create our own methane. We create our own fuel. So this new headworks is heated from methane gas. Uh, all those kinds of things. We put a state-of-the-art uh, heat recovery system on it. So this odor control system, uh, there's a lot of air that goes through that building. Well, you can't, we want, and we don't want to waste that energy, so it goes through heat recovery, so we get about a 90% heat recovery, so there's not a lot of heat going, you know, up into the atmosphere. So it's a very energy efficient, state-of-the-art project um, that uh, is going to last uh, you know, typically these headworks buildings, because it's the worst part of a treatment plant process, last about 20 years. This one's this one's built to last 40 years. So, uh, you know, that was another thing. And so we kept all those things in mind. The order characterization study that we did a few years ago identified about half the order problem with the treatment plant, and about half with eco compost, where all of our solids ultimately end up. Eco has. Uh, uh, changed uh, their operations, so the odors are much reduced at Eco Compost, and they're, they've almost been eliminated at the wastewater treatment plant. So, I think as the warmer months come up, I think the citizens of Missoula and people traveling around that area really aren't going to smell anything anymore, which is a good thing. Well, the, the building had to go deep enough to meet the sewer lines that come into the plant, which were which were pretty deep. And of course, the the structure went in right next to the river, so the groundwater level was high but we had to go 40 feet down into the ground. Okay, so the sewer lines come in about 25 feet or so into the ground. But uh, the building had to be constructed with what they called a treme pad. And that is, is a huge block of concrete that's poured in the ground. It's about 10 or 12 feet thick. And it's, it's to keep it from floating out of the ground. So when the groundwater comes up, it prevents the building from literally popping out of the ground. So we had to go about 40 feet down. And one of the things that we encountered, which was a real problematic for the contractor, and they did a really great job of getting through it, but we found, we came 
to two levels of boulders, uh, and they're actually called glacial erratics. Huge boulders down there, which was a real problem for the contractor. But they're, uh, they're remnants of uh, glacial Lake Missoula. And we hit them at two levels. We hit them at 10 feet, which was one Lake Missoula episode. And we hit them again at 30 feet, which was another Lake Missoula episode. And I suspect that if we went a little deeper and deeper into the ground, you'd hit these levels of these huge boulders. But they're all there when, when the glaciers were here in the last ice age and Lake Missoula was here and things like that. So. So anyway, we had to do that, but we also went well below the, uh, well below the um, uh, water line. So a lot of this construction had to take place within a, what they call a coffer dam and underwater, about 20 feet underwater. So all the concrete was poured underwater, this huge treme pad, um, and then the walls and everything had to be poured, which was uh, uh, you know, a, a technical feat for the contractor to do. I was, I was, through this project, I was kind of amazed at how this works. But ultimately, all the concrete was poured into the ground and everything, but it's uh, almost 15 million pounds of concrete that were poured into this project. 14,800,000 pounds of concrete. That's a lot of concrete. Huge amount of rebar and all those kinds of things. Somebody joked that uh, uh, all that weight's gonna cause the earth to tip, and I said, as long as it tips a little south, I don't care. <laughs> the project was very, very successful. I mean, we got we got what we need for Missoula. It's, it's state of the art. This building's gonna last for a very, very long time. Uh, it's, it you know, has a real green footprint. And you know what, you can't ask for anything more than that, so.
This is the original headworks. Uh, we used Archimedes screw pumps uh, to lift the uh, wastewater up into the plant for treatment. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, 2,000 year old technology. Uh, we had three of them uh, for redundancy uh, to deal with high flows. So the new headworks will be a little bit different pump. We're using submersible pumps. As you can see, um, this is the bypass pumping that we had to do when we converted from the old headworks uh, to the new headworks. So, uh, so we had to put a temporary lift station at, in the plant to, uh, to accomplish that. Th this is uh, uh, the septic uh, receiving station. So we do take uh, a domestic septage from you know, around, the, around the area. This is the new uh, headworks, the bar screens. These are screens that remove the rag, sticks, boards, uh, garbage, debris. And as you can see that they're all in case. The old ones weren't, which caused odor problems and corrosion problems, but these are entirely encased in stainless steel and plastic. This is the downstairs of the new headworks. Uh, that's the uh, air handling unit um, uh, for the uh, uh, odor control systems. Again, here we can see uh, construction workers uh, working on the project, um, doing all those details that they need to do to get this thing operational. Again, as you can see, lots, lots of equipment, lots of piping, lots of pumps. When, once again, those are the enclosed bar screens. Uh, again, this is the uh, downstairs area where the wastewater comes into the plant. Uh, as you can see, that's actually clean water in the channels as we haven't yet started uh, uh, running raw sewage through the plant yet. Then, so everything, everything was tested out with clean water before we uh, turned it over and began to treat uh, sewage or raw wastewater as we call it. We had a very good contractor, a very good consulting uh, firm working with us on this, this project. That's where the sewage actually comes into the plant. Goes through each channel into the bar screens where the, like I say, the debris is removed before it enters the treatment process. That all goes to the landfill. Of course, we can't, uh, the rest of the treatment is biological, so we can't treat, you know, inorganic materials and uh, rocks and things like that. So that all has to be removed before treatment. You see a little debris on the screens there. That's a that's a manual bar screen there uh, for emergency purposes. This area is where the new uh, lift pumps, the sewage pumps, will go. Like I say, though these pumps are different from the Archimedes. They'll be submerged in the water and then you know pump the sewage up to the plant for treatment. This is an odor control system. It's a um, uh, kind of state-of-the-art. Uh, it's technology that comes from uh, Germany. It's photoionization. It uses ultraviolet light and carbon filters to do that. Uh, since this has been made, we have that in operation and stuff, and it's been very effective. The wastewater that comes into the plant is actually pretty, pretty corrosive, hydrogen sulfide gas that, uh, like I say, can be pretty corrosive, so it all has to be high quality stainless steel or fiberglass. This is where all the sticks and rocks and boards and, and debris uh, ends up. The, the, uh, this equipment will dump it into a, uh, a roll-off dumpster and then that's taken up to the landfill. We take one of those up about once a week. Again, this is uh, the air handling unit uh, that uh, sucks up all those nasty odors and runs them through that photoionization odor control system. Um, some of the rooms are isolated. The dumpster room is uh, completely isolated. Uh, the rest just uh, for corrosion control and those kinds of issues. This is the old headworks. As you can see at the end of that pipe, that's, that's the inorganic materials that we're removing with the old headworks. Uh, the new headworks is uh, is um, far more effective in removing that. Uh, to keeping you know these inorganic materials out of the plant, uh, you know we increase capacity and also uh, uh, eliminates or reduces wear and tear on the pumps and other equipment. That's the raw wastewater coming into the into the plant into the old headworks, which no longer exists by the way. 
and that's a bar screen in operation. Uh, as you can see, these are open to the air, uh, creates lots of odors and, and corrosion problems. And as we saw earlier, the, uh, the new bar screens are all enclosed uh, with odor control and, and corrosion control. It's very similar to what the new system is, like I say, a little bit more efficient and like I say, completely enclosed for odor and corrosion control. You can see it can be some pretty nasty stuff. Skylights in the old headworks, the old bar screens. Pretty messy. These are the old what we call grit channels. This removes like sand, gravel, rocks, uh, things like this. This system wasn't very efficient. We now have uh, the new system uh, involves what they call a vortex grit system so instead of channels it, it uh, uses a, a centrifugal force to remove uh, the, the grit or the rock sand and gravel from the wastewater before it enters the plant. Like I say this is all open to the air. This is one of our main uh, odor sources um, that we've now eliminated. Picture of a final clarifier what we just saw where all the uh, or organic material settles out and then the organic material that settles out to the bottom of that goes into uh, what we call solids treatment where it's reduced through anaerobic digestion uh, turned into methane gas which we do use at the treatment plant for heating and uh, what the solids that are left over go to eco compost and turn into beneficial reuse making compost That's one of the bioreactor cells. This one's aerated, as you can see. There's uh, uh, air diffusers on the bottom of these tanks to keep the bacteria alive that do our biological treatment for us. Not unlike a fish tank you might have in your home. All the bioreactors combined are millions of pounds of bacteria that kind of chew the pollutants up and convert them into uh, uh, a usable product. It also help uh, to facilitate settling uh, in these settling tanks that you see there. This is uh, the uh, aeration room. Those uh, blue things in the background, those are, uh, as you can see there, those are aeration blowers. That's what we use to pump the air into those bioreactors to keep the bacteria alive. Uh, those were installed in 2004 with our last upgrade. So these were state-of-the-art, most efficient blowers at the time uh, that we're using now. So, so we, uh, you can see we have three of those. Normally we only run one. Sometimes in the summertime when it gets hot, we run two. But a third one is a backup. Redundant systems. All wastewater systems now have redundant systems uh, in case of failure. As you can see, those are low pressure aeration blowers, probably uh, uh, 20 PSI or so. High volume, low pressure. We have uh, lots, of, lots of aeration tanks, so we need lots of volume. Everything's automatically controlled through uh, variable speed drives, uh, a SCADA system, which stands for supervisory control and data acquisition, so the plant's pretty much automated. Uh, there's a motor control center. Um, uh, we do have pretty high electrical bills. We try to offset those with, you know, using the methane gas that we produce at the treatment plant. That's a uh, fuel tank for emergency generator. Those two large tanks in the background are our digesters. And well, one's a digester on the right, the other one's a fermenter. Anyway, that's where all the solids that settle out in the plant end up for further treatment and then and after treatment there after much of it's converted to methane which we use in the plant like I said uh, all those solids go to eco compost that is the waste gas burner what we don't what gas we don't burn in our uh, our uh, boilers is flared off uh, with that uh, waste burner there I think a lot of people have seen that flame at night from Mullen Road so uh, 
don't worry, it's not a fire. It's, it's intended to be there. Again, the anaerobic digester. The fermenter. That small white tank is a, what's called an iron sponge filter because the gas coming off of that, methane gas coming off of the uh, anaerobic digester is pretty dirty. It's full of hydrogen sulfide and it has a tendency to corrode our boilers. So this actually cleans that up. It removes all the hydrogen sulfide from that gas. There's quite a bit of water in it as well. Uh, so we need to remove that before we run it through the boilers. That building next to the white tank is the boiler room. Again, the waste gas burner. I call that the eternal flame of Missoula, right there. <laughs> that is for the people of Missoula, by the people of Missoula. <laughs> it's hard to see in the daylight, but there's a flame coming off the end of that. That's a, that's a solid holding tank there, uh, and you can see that stainless steel structure next to it. That's also a photo ionization odor control unit. And then we did an odor, odor characterization study here a year or so ago, and um, discovered that this tank is one of, you know, one of our main odor sources. So we put a uh, odor control on that as well. And you can see still under construction. The building to the left of that tank is um, Again, the waste gas burner. Um, uh, the building to the left of that solids holding tank, that's our dewatering building. We have to remove a lot of the water from uh, the solids before we can deliver them to eco compost. So we have a centrifuge that uh, basically it works like a spin cycle on a washing machine. So it spins the water out and then the solids are delivered next door to eco compost. This is the original headworks that uh, we used Archimedes screw pumps uh, to lift the uh, wastewater up into the plant for treatment. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, 2000 year old technology. Uh, we had three of them uh, for redundancy uh, to deal with high flows. So the new headworks will be a little bit different pump. We're using submersible pumps. As you can see, um, this is the bypass pumping that we had to do when we converted from the old headworks uh, to the new headworks. So, uh, so we had to put a temporary lift station at, in the plant to, uh, to accomplish that. Well, the only thing I would like to say is, you know, uh, the project was very, very successful. I mean, we got, we got what we need from Missoula. It's, it's state of the art. This building's gonna last for a very, very long time. Uh, it's, it you know, has a real green footprint and you know what, you can't ask for anything more than that, so.